Good evening. Welcome to the PM services of the Northfield Church of Christ for Sunday, January the 15th. My name is Mark Syme. I'm the minister here at the Northfield Church, and I hope that uh, you will uh, be involved in our service this evening as we sing some songs. Uh, perhaps if you did not have the opportunity to partake of the Lord's Supper this morning, you can do so this evening. And uh, hopefully I'll have a message that will be useful to each one of us. We sing from Songs of Faith and Praise at Northfield. So I will give you the number and the name of the song in case you don't have that book or you can Google the song, however, and can sing along with us. The first song we will sing is entitled God Will Make a Way. God will make a way. In our book, it is number 116. God will make a way. <clears throat> God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide, hold me closely to his side. With love and strength for each new day, he will make a way. He will make a way. Our next song is number 477. There is a place of quiet rest. There is a place of quiet rest, number 477. <clears throat> there is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God. A place where sin cannot molest Near to the heart of God Oh, Jesus, blessed Redeemer Sent from the heart of God Hold us who wait before thee, near to the heart of God. There is a place of comfort sweet, near to the heart of God. A place where we, our Savior, meet Near to the heart of God O oh, Jesus, bless Redeemer Sent from the heart of God Hold us who wait before thee, near to the heart of God. There is a place of full release, near to the heart of God. A place where all is joy and peace, near to the heart of God. O oh, Jesus, blessed Redeemer, sent from the heart of God. 
Hold us who wait before Thee, near to the heart of God. Our song before the Lord's Supper is number 763. O Master, let me walk with Thee. 763. O oh, Master, let me walk with thee. <clears throat> o oh, Master, let me walk with thee in lowly paths of service free. Teach me thy secret, help me bear the strain of toil, the breath of care. Help me the slow of heart to move by some clear winning word of love. Teach me the way what feet to stay and guide them in the homeward way. In hope that sends a shining ray far down the future's broadening way. In peace that only thou canst give with thee, O Master, let me live. One of the ways that uh, we get to walk with our Lord is when we gather about his table on the first day of the week. When we think of Jesus' sacrifice for each one of us when we see that it was part of God's master plan to allow his son to take the form of a human being, to come to earth and uh, uh, live as a human, to feel emotions, to feel pain, uh, to feel happiness, to teach the wonderful teachings of his father. But what we observe right now is the fact that Jesus was willing to make that perfect sacrifice, that sacrifice for the sinners of the world. For we know through the scripture that God said to us at just the right time, he sent Jesus into the world. He didn't send Jesus into a sinless world. He sent him into a sinful world. And we are the beneficiaries of Jesus coming to earth and moreover, we're the beneficiaries of him going to the cross and dying for our sins as the perfect sacrifice. And so as we uh, look at these emblems, uh, the bread representing his body, which was racked in pain on the cross, the fruit of the vine as the representation of the blood, which was shed for each of us. We go back to Calvary. We make it something that happened moments ago rather than 2,000 years ago. So it's fresh in our hearts. It's fresh and new. Let's uh, give thanks for the bread. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're just so grateful that Jesus was willing to come to earth to leave your right hand, that he was willing to take the form of a human, feeling all that humans could feel willing to be tempted, but moreover, as we celebrate now, willing to give up his life that we might live. As we partake of this bread, we think of his body, which must have been in terrible, terrible pain as it was nailed upon that cross. Mm -hmm. Help us take this bread and realize the pain that this bread represents. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen.
we remember as the last of the plagues uh, in Egypt. Uh, it had to do with the death of the firstborn. The only way anybody could escape that was by putting the blood of the lamb over the lamppost of their homes. And it is that symbolism that we look at uh, when Jesus shed his blood, that the angel of death passes from us, that we get to spend eternity with the Lord because Jesus was willing to be the perfect and great sacrifice that uh, we needed, that his blood flowed from his body as life ebbed, uh, our lives have become enriched. Through that blood, our sins are forgiven and we're able to spend eternity with our Lord. Let's pray. We're so grateful to Heavenly Father that our Savior Jesus was willing to shed his innocent blood, the blood that washes away our sins, the blood that uh, is so necessary for us, for uh, its life-giving properties. Bless us as we partake. Help us to be worthy of that sacrifice, even though we're not. Help us to make every effort to try to uh, understand that Jesus did this for us. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. <clears throat> As we have completed the Lord's Supper, we use this time to think of what we give back to the Lord in the form of our contribution. We're told to lay by in store. We're told to give as we have prospered. And I just pray that uh, we will all understand that all great and good things come from the Lord. And as we give, we'll give not only with an open heart, but an open pocketbook that we will give with gratitude, that we will give with love, knowing that uh, God is the possessor of all things. Let's pray for our giving. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to be as the Macedonians were, that uh, before they gave of their monetary uh, needs or their monetary uh, contribution, that they gave themselves first. Help us to remember that as we give ourselves in service to you and then we give ourselves monetarily so that the great commission of Matthew 28 and Mark 16 can be accomplished, that we can go out into all the world and preach the good news. Help us and help those that use these monies to do so wisely that your word may be spread and that those in need may be helped. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. The last song we'll sing is one I'm sure all of you know. It is number 31. It is entitled, Be Still and Know. Be Still and Know. It comes from the 46th Psalm that says, Be still and know that I am God. <clears throat> Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. I am the Lord that strengthens me. I am the Lord that strengthens me. I am the Lord that strengthens me. That concludes the song and singing part of our service. I hope that you were able to uh, participate with us and that you were uplifted as much as I was through singing. As uh, most of you know, I do love to sing. And uh, 
Uh, it may not be reflected in the quality of my voice, but uh, hopefully it is reflected in uh, my zeal for praising God. This evening, uh, I would like to talk about comfort. Uh, we uh, sang songs that were uh, in that uh, general vein uh, this evening. Be still and know that I am God. Um, God will make a way. Uh, these songs were designed to put us into a comforting uh, setting. We all know what it means to be in a comfort zone. I'm not going to talk about that this evening. I'm going to talk about the comfort that we are supposed to give to each other. Uh, most of us are really glad when the political seasons are over because uh, the experts have told us that the best way to win an election is to speak negatively. Uh, you speak negatively about your opponent. You tell everybody what's wrong with your opponent. And very often that outweighs the things that are positive about yourself. Negative, negative, negative. Uh, the news shows on TV, I think they're told that negative sells and that people want to hear what's wrong. <laughs> uh, we're, I guess sometimes our, our hearts are warmed by human interest stories. And if a news person tells one of those, they're certain to preface it by saying, here's something that you would really like to hear. And you know what? Negative, 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 unfortunately, is how some of us may come across to others. You know what? If we look hard enough, we can find something wrong with almost everything in the world. It's, uh, I think, the difference between the cup half full and the cup half empty attitude. If we constantly look at the cup and we see that it's half empty, we're on the negative side of life rather than the positive side. Do, do you ever think, and by the way, we're supposed to think, uh, did you ever think about how draining or even how psychologically upsetting it can be to others when we find fault in them and we complain about so many things. Now, we are uh, charged to lift our brothers and sisters up. When a brother uh, sins, we are supposed to, as Galatians 6, 1 says, those of us who are spiritual, we're supposed to go to that person in gentleness and let them know. Remember, the key here is in gentleness. That's where comfort is found. The Apostle Paul to Timothy in 2 Timothy 3, uh, 15 and 16, talked about the, the words of God, and they are for reproof, rebuke, and correction. These are all things that we look at and we see what's wrong with people's lives so that we can correct them. So understand, I'm not saying that we live in a Pollyanna world in which everything is rainbows and, you know, and unicorns and, and brightly colored confetti. However, when it comes to trying to establish relationships with people, we need to establish them in a positive way if we are to comfort them. I've already mentioned, you know, we're barraged for those of us who get our news from TV or even for those of us who get our news from online about stories of deaths, of riots, of debates, of natural disasters. However, where do we fit in? 
in this scheme? Are we like the newscasters? Do we approach one another with doom and gloom? You know, how do we feel when we approach members of our family or members of our church family who are grim and sour on life? I would contend that it, it compounds the stress others endure. Because let's face it, we live in a fallen world. There are more people out there that don't believe than that do believe. We are told not to be a part of this world. We're told to be citizens of the kingdom of God, not citizens of the kingdom of this world. Yet we have to live in this world. Jesus exemplified that. Jesus even made it a point to go to the sinners. Why? Because they're the ones that needed lifting up. And he did that to comfort those people. We have example after example of people that Jesus, is, Jesus was able to comfort. Now, with that in mind, let's, let's do a 180 here. Negative, negative, negative. Let's balance it off with positive, positive, positive. Positive talk can be uplifting and extremely comforting. God says in Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 24, it says, gracious words are like a honeycomb sweetness to the soul, and health to the body. Those of us that, those of you that know me know that I'm a honey freak. Uh, I buy a five pound uh, jar of honey about every month and a half or so. I put honey in my coffee. I put honey on my cereal. Now, there are some uh, things about, uh, you know, I don't know if they're urban legends that local honeys have things in them that help us to ward off sicknesses. It seems to have worked for me in some way. I don't know that I can uh, attribute it to that. But when God speaks, especially in the Proverbs here, about honey, he's talking about something sweet. He, the Proverbs says, like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the body. When we speak with one another with a gentle spirit, it lifts people up. That's what Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 4 says. It says a soothing tongue is a tree of life, but perversion in it crushes the spirit. See, it, it goes from one end of the spectrum to the other. The, 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 the people that are willing to speak with a gentle tongue are the ones that lift others up, are the ones that comfort other people. And so as children of light, and that's what we are called, we are called to think on things that are lovely and of good report. In Philippians chapter 3, Paul enumerated those. Let your mind dwell on these things. Why did he say that? Because when we fill our minds with the positive and the wonderful things, kind of like in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, the fruit of the Spirit. When we fill ourselves with those things, negativity can't creep in. That being said, whatever we think about is what will come out. And make no mistake about that. When people say, oh, those were just words. Sorry, I can't buy that. Words are produced by the larynx in our body, but the, the, the source of those words are our brain. We don't say the words unless they got, get processed through our brain first. 
And so when we say things that are non-comforting to people, they are displayed in those words. They let people know, and people are not fools, that those are the things that are coming from our heart. And those are displayed in our speech. We, we almost tell people that's our psychological posture. And so what we're told to do is we're told to meditate on the goodness and the mercy of God. And then we'll find ourselves speaking about it as well as others do. Remember, Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25 says this to us. Remember, anxiety in a man's heart weighs it down, but a good word makes it glad. So as far as we seek to comfort others, let us focus on the fact that the words that we speak are a powerful tool that can either make things better or make things work worse. Now, if we want to, to get a real feel for that, if we go to James chapter 3, verses 1 through 12, it tells us about the tongue. It tells us about the words that come forth from our mouths. And it tells us that our words can either be used to comfort someone or to slice through them like a razor. It says that our words are a powerful tongue, a powerful uh, a medium for us. And even though the tongue is small, it reminds us that the rudder of a ship is small. It reminds us, this is James chapter 1, uh, chapter 3, verses 1 to 12, that it's like a bit which is not very big in a horse's mouth, but the bit in a horse's mouth can cause the horse to go forward to go either direction. Now, Paul instructed that Christians in Colossae speak to one another in gentle terms and with grace. In Colossians chapter 4, and verse 6, it says, Let your speech always be with grace, as though seasoned with salt, so that you will know how you should respond to each person. Aren't those words wonderful? Our words should be seasoned with grace. Why? So we know how to respond with one another, that our words will be used to comfort one another, not to condemn one another. You know, have you ever heard the term, if you don't have something good to say, don't say anything? Sometimes we need to really bridle our tongue in the face of uh, these this inner turmoil that's in us sometime. Look for the good in others and tell them about it. Nothing lifts people up more than them knowing that they're along the right path and they're working to do good. Remember, remember some of the things they've done to help you, no matter how big or how small and tell them how much you appreciate that. Try, try hard to find the good in a situation rather than the bad. I'm always reminded of Jane's mom. Jane's mom, Jane's mom had, uh, Jane is my wife, just so that you know. Jane's mom had such a sweet disposition uh, about her. If someone spilled their milk at the table, it was just, that's okay. We'll just clean it up. If someone burnt the toast, she would say, that's okay. We can just scrape that burnt stuff off. 
Well, some people would fly off the handle and say, oh, you clumsy person, you spilled that good milk all over the place. Ah, oh, you burnt the toast, you wasted a piece of bread. You find the good and you find the sweetness. Try hard to find the good things in the situations of life and be, be sure to extenuate that in your speech. Be sure to show that in the words that you speak. Positive talk can be like yeast in bread. Bread will not rise without yeast in it. It doesn't have those wonderful properties that bread has, the, the airiness in it as the yeast works to make these carbon dioxide bubbles as it ferments in the bread. Positive talk can be like this yeast in the lives of others. It can permeate a family. It can permeate a church. It can permeate all those that we come in contact with. And so as the lesson ends this evening, today, why don't we make it a point that I will comfort my family, my church family, and my friends by finding things to say that are positive and then saying those things to them. Why? Because we comfort one another through positive thought. I hope this message reached home with you. You know, we also, at the end of all of our uh, messages, we also give people the opportunity to respond to the gospel call. If you are not a child of God, we open the invitation to you. If you have read, studied, been taught, and understand that you need to confess Jesus as the Son of God and repent of your former life, be baptized for remission of your sins, we open that invitation to you this evening. If you need to come to the Lord, let us know. We are a phone call away. Let's pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, I pray that we will use this lesson uh, this evening in a, in a very, very positive way. That we will comfort one another through one of the ways that we're able to do that, and that is through our speech. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to say the things uh, that are reflected in our brain and in our heart. Help us to lift one another up rather than tear one another down. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, as we uh, pursue your kingdom here on earth. Help us to be good members of your body. Help us to use our time to serve one another. And in serving one another, we also comfort one another, not with words, but with deeds. Be with us uh, through this evening, dear Heavenly Father. Help us when we put our heads on our pillows tonight that we'll be thinking of you, that we will be thinking of your words that uh, comfort us in our lives. Continue to bless us. Continue to be with us. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please be safe. May God bless you all. Man of sorrows,